Hey guys, today we get to talk about more beef. And this time it is the backlash from Unsleeve Media to Tularean Community College. So let's get into it. Unsleeve Media says new video Wizards of the Coast show Tularean Community College tried to burn me because a single event at a single Grand Prix sold out. Then the hilarious mess that was Grand Prix New Jersey happened blowing it up in his face. So this is the event that we had covered. Um, we can all admit that this event, GP New Jersey, was not the best event for a casual player or any Magic player to really see. It was actually quite embarrassing in my opinion, and I personally would not be want to be associated with such a event. Now, will future events be better? Uh, the answer is no. I think future events will also not have trophies. They'll also have a black tablecloth on a what looks like a homeless shelter. Things are not going very well. Yet there is this positivism. There's this concept that things are going well. But when you actually look at the pictures and you know the the reason there's no coverage is would you really want coverage on a top eight which looks terrible. So yeah, uh, I think Unsleeve Media brings out some pretty good points, and obviously there is internal tension between these two. They've ne maybe at some point in time they did get along, but most recently they haven't got along, and it does seem like the drama brings subscribers for both sides. Um, it's good for business, if you will, and they represent opposite poles, not just the ideal. Not just their political ideology, but also their um, who they are and what they believe in internally. To Larry Community College, he had a I think his BA is in English in Arizona, and then he got an MA in English, and then he moved to the West Coast to teach at, part time at community college. That's his background. He didn't like teaching at the community college because of various reasons. And that's not, in truth, a extremely high-paying job. One of the reasons he didn't want to continue was because it wasn't a high-paying job and there was no medical insurance. Imagine him worrying about medical insurance, right? If only every YouTuber, cheeseburger, had the... High, had the knowledge to worry about medical insurance. But his life has been pretty interesting in terms of just his life. Um, I'm not going to speak to his magic. A lot of that, I think, is not correct. Um, I played magic. I have the cards. I have the deck boxes. I have the collection to prove that, yes, indeed, I still have the first rare which was Norvin Paladin from a beta pack I pulled thinking that Dragon Whelp was actually the rare because that would be the logical assumption and I played and I played in a Wizard of Coast store uh, Wizard of Coast actually had stores back when I was in elementary and middle school I remember buying a Simpsons board game from them like a clue game I thought that was great that they also had board games at the time you're also doing Pokemon at the time I think they own Pokemon and they were doing Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments. It was like a local game store. And then it failed because they couldn't generate revenue. So I remember Magic for what it is. Not some... Tolarian's view is very idealistic. Because I don't believe he plays Magic. I don't believe he goes to local game stores every FNM. I don't believe he goes to pre-release. Because the answer is he can't. He has a young son. He's not going to be playing Magic until... from. 11, 8, 11 p.m. until 6 in the morning, right? Does this look like someone you see at pre-release? I would answer no. Um, I do those pre-releases. MTG Headquarters has done these pre-releases. So there is a divergent magic. The magic community is not all just uh, ants, right? They are different. And what you want to get from the magic community is very different. And that's the biggest divide I see is that the idealized version of 
uh, Tolarian Community College is, hey, I'm going to sit back, make some videos. The community loves me. No matter what I do, I'll be on the top page of Reddit for whatever video I'll post. And I'll get lots of views and lots of likes. And um, I'm, he doesn't, I don't think he understands what it's like. And his sponsorship is a, a website. I mean, it's a website. Yes, there is a local card game. I realize that that's actually a physical store. But the majority of people ordering from the website are not located at the physical store. So that's a very idealized view. Um, it's not, in my opinion, reality as to this event. So the idealized view is Magic is growing because GP New Jersey sold out. The reality is you look at the event, you look at there's no coverage, rightfully so in this case. There's no trophy for the winner. There's the top eight looks like a bunch of homeless people playing in a shelter. Um, no one is, you know, I mean, no one can say this top eight from that picture looks prestigious. Like if you were talking about, I went to NYU and NYU Washington Square Park, they have chess, they have chess uh, boards for people to play. And there's some really great chess players who play there all the time and that's all they do. That feels better than this. That feels a lot better. They at least have clocks. They at least have, you know, pieces. And, you know, there's the chessboard is ingrained in the actual stone. So they can't, you know, steal it, right? And it, there's crowds. There's audiences. There's like a little wager. It's, it has more excitement than this top eight GP looks like. And I get it. It's Sunday evening. People are not, you know, uh, they're not going to want to stay. There's a story of a person who made his first top eight and then he just decided to catch his plane because it was not worth it for him to play it out. Magic as a professional, professional um, game is a joke. Yeah, it is a joke because of cheating. It is a do joke because of stealing and lying and the judge community, which, you know, I still have very skeptical about those guys because it seems like it's a joke because of magic pros like Frank. I mean, it's just, it's not even jokes on that. It's just dangerous. If you are a young female magic player, I would actually say that this event is dangerous because there are predators like Frank and others. Some of your favorite magic pros, I would say, have predatory behavior your favorite magic pros. And I would say, huh, that's interesting. Like this, you know, we're promoting all this um, females in magic. And yet this is probably the most dangerous place they can go. So if you, if they, if a female is interested in geeky stuff and she goes to, let's say a anime convention, she can go with friends. She can go with you know her mom and dad there's like a safety element to it which is a lot safer like would you be safer at a magic tournament or at an anime convention now not at every anime convention is very good but uh in general there's going to be more females and then you know it just feels safer and then you get to the magic convention where you know <laughs> you have just uh I, I truly believe like that AJ dude is like the definition of what is being supported in our community. It's someone who says things that sound good, but are illogical. So when you talk about like women empowerment and all this great stuff and magic, and then you abuse, physically abuse your girlfriend for two, three years, Mm, mm, I don't know. You talked a good game, but then it came out that you didn't talk a good game. And the biggest irony is you told everyone to believe the woman when they, you know, call out their accusers, except when they accuse you and they have per a personal relationship with you. Eh, seems kind of weird, AJ. Also seems weird that she supported you, paid for your food, paid for your GP attendance, paid for everything you did, and you still abused her emotionally and potentially physically, which is criminal, AJ. And this is the type of characters you will see. 
So, so here's what I'm going to say. Most Magic players are really awesome people. And when you go to pre-release or FNM, you're going to bump into some great people because they're not at the pro level. At the pro level, you're dealing with scum. You're dealing with cheaters, liars, predators. I mean, it's just like if I had a bar, if I had a giant wheel, no, not a giant wheel, a giant chart, uh, a circle, and I had to put people in predators or put people in cheating, cheated, you know, or had cheated in the past, put people in homeless, and then put people in like, my gosh, they're going to steal my backpack and punch me in the face. That would be the primary. Uh, so I don't know if a lot of these content creators actually play Magic. I own a Magic store, and I see the type of people who come in my store, and that's why I have changed that. And, you know, anime people are great. They come in, they buy your stuff, and they leave. Pokemon people are great. They come in, they buy the stuff, they leave. Magic players, they don't buy anything, and they expect to be there. They expect for you to pay their electricity, heating, air conditioning, whatever it is. They expect you to pamper them for 10 hours while not buying any stuff. Maybe a bag of Cheetos so they can touch your anime figures and make them on. So the expectations and the idealization of Magic the Gathering from people like Tolarian is what MTG headquarters is mad about because it's not realistic. Um, I don't believe Tolarian Community College goes to midnight pre-releases. Unsleeve Media are used to, and I do, of course. That's a different environment. It's not what you expect it to be it's not like everyone is well dressed everyone has their professor things where their patches on their sleeves and it's so obvious to me when like a content creator is speaking like about magic and it sounds like almost too good to be true there's no cheaters there's nobody to steal your bag there's no trade sharks there's none of this stuff there's no people to nickel dime you the store doesn't want to give you 10% for your <laughs> new cards of your value. It's just very strange when you, you deal with that. And it's just like, have these people played Magic recently or have played Magic at all? I mean, when you look at Command Zone and stuff, like you don't see cele these quote e-celebrities e at FNM. Wedge doesn't have an FNM. Wedge is very vocal about not supporting local game stores and buying cards from Walmart. I can make a 10 million videos about Wedge doing that. Um, professor is as well. No matter how many times a professor says, oh, support your local game, he doesn't mean it because there's an ad for Card Kingdom. He doesn't mean it because there's Channel Fireball pays his plane ticket in his hotel and his stipend and his meals. Channel Fireball actually is the hand that feeds Tolarian and Wedge. They actually eat from their hands. Without their stuff money, they cannot eat or travel or, you know. So, you're dealing with a idealized version of what Magic the Gathering is versus the reality. And I can tell you there are many YouTubers, the Mana Source, Tolarian Community College, I can go down the list, but those are the two main ones that I don't actually think has, has a deck. I don't think they have played Magic in a long time. And more to the point, even if they do play Magic, it's because someone's paying them to go to a, a GP, not because they want or actually like Magic. Magic is an ends for means, which might be more donations, but it is not something they enjoy. I love magic and I always have. I'm bleeding money because of magic right now. Because I've always wanted to own a Magic the Gathering store. And if I don't do this when I'm at this age, I won't ever have that opportunity again. And I can tell you, it's not going well. But I'm going to deal with it because it's a bucket list item is opening, owning a Magic the Gathering store. I, originally, I said one year. Now it looks like six months. <laughs> Now it looks like three months. So, I mean, it's it depends on how, if I can somehow collaborate rate the uh, bleeding. Because, my God, it's like puddles of blood right now. Pretty gross. Hi, guys.